As I mentioned, we still don't have the text of the Republican secret bill to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Six years and counting, they can't produce a replacement. It looks like we're going to vote on this in a few days. By congressional standards, this is a high crime and misdemeanor. To think that we are going to consider a bill within 10 days affecting every American, affecting one-sixth of the American economy, a bill that will say to some people, you are going to lose your health insurance, and to others, we're going to offer you a health insurance policy that really isn't worth the paper it's written on, and we haven't seen the bill? Well, what's the history of this? Is this the way the Republicans always operate? Not really. In December 2009, Republican Senator McConnell, their leader, said, when we were debating the Affordable Care Act, this massive piece of legislation that seeks to restructure one-sixth of our economy is being written behind closed doors without input from anyone in an effort to jam it past not only the Senate, but the American people. End of quote. That was Senator McConnell about the Affordable Care Act when it was being proposed by, Sen by President Obama. Well, what's the fact? During the passage of the Affordable Care Act, the Senate held over 50 bipartisan hearings on the bill. How many bipartisan hearings have we held on the new Republican health care proposal? None. Not one. At that time, six years ago, we had a week-long markup in the Finance Committee and a month-long markup in the Health Committee. The Senate spent, and I remember this well, 25 consecutive days in session on the floor of the United States Senate debating this bill. It's the second longest consecutive period of time ever spent on a bill in the United States Senate. We considered on the floor of the Senate hundreds of amendments. You know, we ended up adopting 150 Republican amendments to the Affordable Care Act. Not a single one of them would vote for it, but we took their proposals to make it better seriously and adopted 150 changes. How much of a chance will we have to amend the Senate Republican bill that may come before us as soon as this week remains to be seen. It could be what we call a voterama around here, which is a corruption of what this grand, this grand institution really established as a standard of operation for generations and centuries. The voterama lets you vote on an amendment offered to the bill with two minutes debate. Changing the healthcare system of America and you have one minute on each side to debate your amendment? Is that a serious undertaking with something that is that consequential for so many Americans? No one has seen this secret bill, not Democrats, not many Republican senators. And when I asked the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Tom Price, last week in a hearing, have you seen the bill? You're the one who's going to have to implement it. No, he said, I haven't seen it either. This weekend, the presiding officer, Senator Rubio, a Republican from Florida, said, and I quote, the Senate is not a place where you can just cook up something behind closed doors and rush it for a vote on the floor. Mr. President, I couldn't agree more. Senator Ron Johnson, Republican from Wisconsin, said, and I quote, I want to make sure the American people, I want to make sure the members of Congress have enough time to evaluate it. I want to have enough time to really take a look at what we're voting on. Republican Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. Senator Bob Corker, Republican Senator from Tennessee said, I've said from day one, I'll say it again, the process is better if you do it in public. Obviously, that's not the route that is being taken. I didn't pull these quotes from months and years ago. They're from the weekend. The comments made over the weekend by Republican members about their very own leadership and the process they're following in preparing to change America's health care system. Let's talk about some numbers. Let's start with zero. How many hearings have we had on the Senate bill to repeal the Affordable Care Act? Zero. How many markups have we had? Zero. How much time has the Secretary of Health and Human Services, the man responsible for the, uh, implementing this bill, spent on it to review it? Zero. How much Democratic input has been allowed for the secret negotiation? Zero. How many women senators have been involved in crafting the bill? Zero. How many medical organizations or patients groups support the secret Senate bill? Zero. 
And most concerning of all, how much time has the public had to even read this bill? Zero. Take a look at another number, 23 million. The Congressional Budget Office estimates 23 million Americans will lose their health insurance under the House passed repeal bill, one million in Illinois. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This is a driving factor in terms of my views on the subject. If you have ever in your life been the parent of a seriously ill child and didn't have health insurance, you'll never forget it as long as you live. I know I've been there. I was a law student, newly married, brand new baby girl with a real serious health issue, and I had no health insurance. My wife and I sat in the charity section of Children's Hospital waiting for them to call our name so we could take our little girl in to the latest resident with 100 questions who wanted to go through them all over again. And I thought to myself, Durbin, how did you ever reach this point where you don't have health insurance? I fixated on health insurance from that point forward. From the time I got out of law school, for years afterwards, while my daughter was growing up, I not only had health insurance, I sometimes had two health insurance policies. I was so worried about having coverage if I ever really needed it. So we want to take health insurance away from 23 million Americans? You want it to be your family, your son, your daughter? I sure wouldn't. Another number, 750. Lower income, older Americans would see their premiums increase 750% under the House passed repeal bill from $1,700 under ACA to $14,000 under the Republican plan. Now, how can that happen? How can you see the premiums go up that fast? Because we built into the Affordable Care Bill a guaranteed protection for disparity in premium payments of no more than three to one. The lowest cost health insurance policy cannot be, uh, I should say the most expensive one, cannot be more than three times the lowest cost policy. The Republicans changed that to five to one. Well, who does that affect? If you live between 50 and 64 years of age, you're in a category of people not yet eligible for Medicare. If you're now facing chronic illnesses that could make health insurance more expensive, you will pay the higher premiums. The higher premiums, when calculated, are dramatically higher for this group. That's why the American Association of Retired Persons has come out four square against the Republican Trump Care, the Republican repeal bill. It's just unfair to those between the ages of 50 and 64. 130 million. That's how many people nationwide have pre existing conditions. Almost half of the people in Illinois have a pre existing condition. Several weeks ago, I had a procedure for uh, an atrial flutter, worked out just fine. Now I have a pre existing condition. I'm in the category. What does that mean? If you went out to buy health insurance with a pre existing condition, you're charged more if you can buy insurance at all. So when the Republican bill that passed the House does not guarantee, as the Affordable Care Act, that you cannot be discriminated against because of a, a pre existing condition, it makes millions of Americans, 130 million, more vulnerable. Is that what they wanted to achieve? Where you stand depends on where you start. If you think everyone is entitled to health insurance, then you can't be standing for something that allows pre-existing conditions to be used against you. A lot of the people that I'm talking about have employer insurance, but what about those who shop in the individual market or purchase individual insurance in the future? Under the House repeal bill, insurers would once again be allowed to charge people with pre-existing conditions more money for insurance. The next number is 33,000. Senator Menendez referred to it. That's how many people are dying every year because of the opioid or heroin overdose. 33,000, 1,800 a year in Illinois. Now listen to this. The Republican bill dramatically cuts the Medicaid program the nation's largest provider of substance abuse treatment services, and allows insurers to once again refuse coverage for those needed services. 280,000 is the next number. That's how many children in Illinois depend on Medicaid for school-based health and medical services, from feeding tubes and handicap buses to special education teachers. I made a point this last week when I was home to visit the schools in Chicago and Bloomington and hear firsthand what cuts in Medicaid meant to local school districts. Many senators don't realize this. 
But the kids that you're dealing with who have learning disabilities and other disabilities, many of them are supported at your local schools by Medicaid dollars. The Medicaid dollars pay for the counselors, pay for the special buses, pay for the feeding tubes for these kids to survive. So when you make a dramatic cut in Medicaid, as the Republican bill that came out of the House does, you endanger the very services and the very benefits that these special ed kids need. The school districts are mandated by law to help these kids. But if the money's cut off from Medicaid, what are they gonna do? The Republican repeal, repeal bill that every Republican congressman in my state voted for slashes $40 billion in Medicaid funding to Illinois, including money to school districts. Three, this is the most important single number in the next 10 days in the United States Senate. Three, that's the number of Republican senators needed to stop this. Surely, there are three Republican senators who are concerned enough about this secret behind closed doors process that we're witnessing when it comes to rewriting health care in America. At least three Republican senators who want to take time to properly review this legislation that affects one-sixth of our econ economy. Just the senators who have publicly stated their personal concerns about this process, if the three of them would come together, we could stop this and do it the right way.